All right. So let's go through and find the Big Ten teams. Number one, Seton Hall versus St. Joseph's, LSU, Providence, Princeton, Boston College, UNLV. So there's no Big Ten teams in that region. Wake Forest, App State, Georgia, Xavier, Virginia Tech, Richmond. There we go. There's Ohio State, number two versus Cornell. All right, let's start with this region, and then we'll get to the next ones as we go. So, uh, Brent, your thoughts on Ohio State being the two seed, Wake Forest being the one seed uh, in this region? Yeah, I think that the NIT selection committee here got it right. Um, Ohio State was you know, close to that tournament bubble, but they probably had to win two more games to realistic in the Big Ten tournament to realistically have a shot of making the actual field, especially with all the bid sealers that kind of emerged and knocked a few extra spots off the bubble. So seeing them as a two seed, you know, being in that next four out kind of um, is, I guess, where I would expect them to be. Uh, these are home games, right? That So they're going to be playing Cornell at home. I think, I'm, yeah, I'm I don't on. think it gets to Hinkle Fieldhouse until the Final Four. Right. Somebody in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's how the NIT goes. Ohio State hasn't been in the NIT for so long, I don't remember. Last year, they didn't make the NIT. <laughs> yeah, NIT. we missed a cut in their last year. Um, and we, uh, we weren't on the right side of it, of missing the NIT. It was even worse that we actually just didn't make it to the NIT. But, yeah, yeah I I mean, for Ohio State, it's going to be good for them. I mean, just hire Jake Dealer full time, so it's going to be good for for them to keep playing. I know some teams like St. John's and Indiana rejected the NIT. I don't know if Indiana was actually even invited, but I saw St. John's did reject their invite, uh, for, mm-hmm. which it makes sense. Those those guys had higher aspirations, and they missed the tournament and were frustrated. For us, it's it's a new coach, it's a young team. It's going to be good to to go get them some more experience playing together. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know anything about Cornell. I'll have to do some research there. But I think just the way we're playing right now, we should be able to take care of business. And I, I like the way we stack up to get to Wake Forest um, and that kind of uh, regional final. Yeah, uh, Sonny, do you have any thoughts on Ohio State making it to the uh, final four of the NIT here? If they're able to do that, I mean, I can see it happening. You know, I teams really turned around since uh you hired the new coach and uh sure let's let's go with uh, the buckeyes i know who i'm on the panel with <laughs> uh so to give some background on cornell cornell is 68th in offense and like 133rd i think it was in defense ohio state is better than that in both of their 173rd, sorry. Ohio State is better than that in both of their categories. They are 59th in offense and actually 37th on, no, sorry, sorry, 37th on offense, 60th on defense. Check and make sure one more time. That's right with Cornell. Yeah. Um, So they're better than them in both areas. So Ohio State should beat Cornell, especially being at home. But um, I think the team that gives me the most worry in this bracket, possibly Xavier, even though they haven't had a great season and they have a losing record. I still think Xavier is a better team than some people give them credit for. Um, but, but yeah. So any more thoughts on Ohio state's region there, guys? No, for me, really. I'm just excited uh, to see these guys keep playing some ball. should be fun for I, them to, to keep going. I agree. I agree. All right, let's go to the big bracket up here. We have Minnesota as the five seed. I guess, you know, that's they don't really give them the seed, but they're facing the four seed. So uh, they would be the five seed. Indiana State is the number one in this. Uh, Ohio State, or not Ohio State, Iowa must be in the next one. So we'll get to them here in a second. But uh, Minnesota's path here, do you like the five seed for them? And do you think that they're going to be able to get by the Thad Mata, Butler, Indiana State, people like that? What are your thoughts, Sonny? Well, I just had uh, Ali Babwa, who was in the chat uh, on my Big Ten show, talking about Minnesota uh, basketball. So out of, out of loyalty to him, I'll have them advance the first round. But there's no way I can take them to get past Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in that second round. Yeah, that's a tough draw for them. Tough draw for them. Uh, Brant, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Minnesota's they, they kind of had an up-and-down season. So did Butler. Um I really don't know what we're going to get in this game. It's a, it's a fun matchup. And I I do want to see that must-see television between Dawson Garcia and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar meeting in the paint. 
So uh, we'll, move, we'll move Minnesota just for the sake of having that second round matchup. But real talk, though, I, I I think Minnesota could beat Indiana State. Like I think they're they have a really good chance of beating yeah, I think, Indiana State I think, just because they don't have nearly the defense that you need to contain a guy like Elijah Hopkins and Dawson Garcia and Cam Christie too. I mean, Cam Christie's a future NBA player. Well, I mean, yeah, Jared, exactly. I, mean, I think I, I was last on the panel with you guys when we guys were talking about coaches, and I really talked about how highly I value Ben Johnson. So yeah, this is not yeah. a I'm not trying to dig at Minnesota at all. It's, no, uh, I know. We're talking about, you know, uh, Long Beach State or who, who who was it? You know, Disney stories. Uh, this is one of yeah. those where there's going to be a movie made about the big guy at Indiana State. That's true. That's true. I'm trying to see when the times of these games are because I don't want to be podcasting during them. Yeah, Seven I'm going to for that. Illinois first, game is, Illinois first game is 210 on Thursday. And I've got both a five-year-old and a three-year-old and. Oh, this is a couple, for a couple hours later, so we'll see how I handle that whole post game. <laughs> yeah, stick an iPad in front of him, let him watch Miss Rayforce. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Go over here, watch this, please. Give me my time. <laughs> or if we uh, lose, I'm just not going to go on. Forget it. <laughs> Phillips calling his shot, saying NIT Final Four, Ohio State, Minnesota, Iowa, and Princeton. Um, I would love to see that. That would be awesome. Why not? Uh, Fisherman says highest seed is home for the first two rounds. So yeah. So final four is Hinkle Fieldhouse then. Yeah. Or no, first two. So sorry. Hinkle Fieldhouse is final four and elite eight. Okay. That makes sense. It is kind of weird the way the words are there, but I can see why they do that. So um, before we get to Iowa, Will any players from Ohio State, Minnesota, or Iowa into the portal before the NIT starts? I really hope not. Dawson Garcia would be the one that I would be the most concerned about. Do you guys have any thoughts? Just, just genuinely asking, do you feel like that ability left? Right, yeah, I'm wondering that too, because we were like, Illinois was in the competition for him like two times, I feel like, already in the transfer portal. I didn't even know he was uh, eligible to play again. He might have to ask for a waiver, but the rumor that I was hearing is that he did have one more year of eligibility. Um, I don't have that concrete. That was just a rumor I heard, but um, yeah, yeah um, it's hard. It's impossible to keep track of <laughs> eligibility yeah, nowadays. The COVID years and everything. Dave's a Minnesota fan. He says Garcia has one more year. So yeah, gotcha. Uh, um, for for Ohio State, I think now that. Uh, to the full or keep rolling with the boy. I, I don't think we lose. I mean, we could potentially lose. Yeah, Fisherman mentioned Zed Key. I yeah. could see him leaving, but I think I still just the type of guys that he is. I think he'd want to stick around for this kind of one last run with the guys and then potentially hit the portal after that. But I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about retaining everybody. Uh, I think this, the same can be said about Iowa. I think they've got a lot of younger guys who seem like they all kind of want to grow together. Uh, Minnesota, kind of the same deal. I'd, I'd be surprised to see, at least like, I mean, maybe like some some like backup off the bench who's not really getting any minutes to the hop in the portal. But I don't think any relevant rotation players from this team, off the top of my head, uh, we're going to see you before the NIT. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, Sonny, Kent's calling you out. Oh, and Parker Fox doesn't get. Um, a movie made about him, SMH, Sonny. Respect my guy. You have a response to Kent there? No, Kent's smarter than me. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fisherman also says that Chapman is homesick, uh, which Fisherman does know a good amount about the Ohio State basketball program. So if uh, if Fisherman is saying it, I uh, I believe there is a little bit to that at the very least. So I hope that he's not too homesick. I hope he uh, gets home over the summer and comes back not homesick. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, he's one of those guys, like I mentioned, where you're not really playing. Definitely could be inside a person who wasn't really going to play anyways in the NIT. So they, they get at the portal. And he's one I wouldn't be surprised to see leave. But definitely hope we get him back next year. I hope so, too. Uh, Kent, wash your mouth out with soap. Owen Freeman should hit the po- portal if everyone wants to make a tournament run. You wash your mouth out with soap, Kent. We love Owen Freeman. And we want him to be with, with Fran forever, or at least however long Fran is there for. Um, 
Yes, I did hear that too. Fisherman Ohio State's NIL is huge this year for basketball. They, I did hear that as well. So that will help keep guys for sure. All right. Speaking of Iowa and Omen, Owen Freeman, uh, Iowa is the three seed matching up against Jerome Tang and Kansas State. I have to be honest. I hate this matchup for Iowa. I think Jerome Tang's a really good coach, and I think that he always has his guys up and ready to play. So uh, I'm not saying that I'm picking against Iowa here, but um, I don't really like this matchup. You have any thoughts, Brant? Um, where's the matchup? I'm like, I don't know if I'm down here. Uh, three. Oh yeah. Kansas. Yeah. I'm not sure I love that matchup for them either. Uh, I I think Kansas state, uh, probably gets that one done. Iowa just, you know, that they haven't been that hot as of late as well. Yeah. You have any thoughts, Sonny? No, I mean, I was young. Um, I, I'd, I'd go with Kansas State as well. Yeah. I do like this. Uh, I do like this Iowa team, but um, they are kind of the inverse of one another. Jerome Tang has his guys play really good defense. That's why I was just checking. Ken Palm has a Kansas State 12, 22nd on defense and Iowa's 15th on offense. And then Kansas State is 138th on offense. And Iowa is one. 53 on defense so it will be a good matchup from that standpoint we'll see uh what happens there but i think if they beat kansas state they should be able to take on utah or uc irvine i'm not really that scared of villanova as a one seed so honestly if iowa gets past the first game there i could see a path for them to get to the final four i agree i think kansas state's probably the hardest matchup for them in that entire uh region so that they probably got the worst shot they could have gotten there right yeah South Florida is the other really good team in that region, but they're buried to not see them until the Elite Eight. So if UCF or Villanova takes care of them, 